This is video number three of the Level of Overall Economic Activity video series, which is the first unit in macroeconomics, so video number three. In this video, I'm just going to give a very brief overview of how national income is measured. If you remember in an early video in the series, I spoke about how um, households provide firms with the factors of production, uh, and then the firms in return uh, pay those payments to the factors of production, wages, interest, rent, and profit. This is the income flow. Now, the households take this income that they earn and they spend it on the goods and services, uh, which gives us the expenditure flow. Um, at the same time, there's the output flow, which is when the firms take the factors of production, in return they produce the output of goods and services. Now, in theory, the income flow, the output flow, and the expenditure flow should be identical because it's all flowing within the economy. This is in a simple and closed economy. Even, even in a complex and open economy uh, where you have leakages and injections, the output flow, the income flow, and the expenditure flow should equal each other. So again, with um, a more sort of complex and open economy where you have uh, injections like investment, government expenditure, and export revenue, uh, and leakages like savings, taxes, and import expenditure, uh, we, we assume, again, well, we don't assume. In the end, the expenditure flow, the income flow, and the output flow should be equal. So how is national income measured? Let's see. The most commonly used measure of a country's national income is gross domestic product, GDP. There are three different methods that are all used to calculate GDP. One method looks at the expenditure flow, one method looks at the income flow, and one method looks at the output flow. So let's have a look at the output method. So the method that focuses more on the output flow. This measures what we call national output. How does the output method work? Well, what happens is uh, uh, the measuring body, whoever is responsible for measuring, sums up all the value added by all the firms in the economy. Here, value added means at each stage of the production process, we deduct the costs of inputs so as not to double count the inputs. So, if a farmer has already produced wheat and then this wheat goes into the production of bread, if you put the cost of wheat in the cost of bread, you're double counting that wheat because it was already calculated as the output of the farmer. So, you need to deduct the cost of the inputs and only add the sum of the value added. The data is usually grouped according to the different production sectors. So, we have agriculture and mining, the primary sector, manufacturing, secondary sector, and services tertiary sector. The output method here will define GDP as the total monetary value of all final goods and services produced within an economy in a year. Remember, by final goods and services, we mean we deduct the cost of inputs or we just focus on the uh, value added. And this is the output method which focuses on the output flow in the circular flow of income. Then there's the income method. The income method focuses more on the income flow. The income method measures the value of all incomes earned in the economy. In that case, GDP would be the sum of wages earned by labor, interest earned by capital, rent earned by land, and profits earned by enterprise. This will give us national income. Uh, remember, the last method, the output method, will give us national output. In the end, national output and national income should be equal because they all measure the same thing. The third and final method is the expenditure method. This focuses more on the expenditure flow. The expenditure method measures the value of all spending on goods and services in the economy. It is calculated by 
Summing up the spending of all the different sectors in the economy, spending by households is known as consumption spending, C. Spending by firms is known as investment spending. Spending by governments is known as G, government spending. And spending by foreigners on exports minus the spending on imports. This is known as net exports, X minus M. This method defines GDP as the total value of all spending in the economy. Therefore, GDP is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. This gives us national expenditure. In the end, remember, national expenditure should equal national income, which should equal national output. So, as I said, whichever method is chosen, in theory, accounting will result in the, final, in the same final figure. National output should equal national income, should equal national expenditure. However, in practice, there are some inevitable accuracies. In the data, due to the timing of data gathering, maybe, or gathering it from so many different and varied sources, and so the figures are often uh, have to be revised. And remember, each method has a different government body in charge of measuring it. So the differences in statistics and the timing of gathering the data, in practice, there are some inevitable inaccuracies. But in theory, um, national output should equal national income, should equal national expenditure.